Welcome to For Your Consideration. My name is Sterling Hedgepeth. I'm the programming manager for both the Docklands and Mill Valley Film Festivals. And you may remember Song Without a Name, which we played at MVFF 42 back in 2019. And now it is the official submission for the Academy Award for Best International Film from Peru. And we're very, very pleased to be able to have the, right, the director and co-writer of the film, Melina Leon, here uh, to join us. Thank you and welcome. And congratulations on a wonderful film. Thank you very much, Sterling. It's a pleasure to be in touch again. Now, um, this is such an impressive film because you have multiple story, thre story threads that are intertwining. We have Forjina and her, and her baby. We have Pedro and his investigation and Leo and his recruitment of Shining Path. And those films and all those stories intertwine so wonderfully while still showing what it's like to live under a dictatorship. Uh, what were your challenges in terms of being able to create these stories and um, what were some of the things that you were hoping to emphasize in creating this film? Well, thank you for that. Um, I think that's precisely what I was looking for to, to show that not only one aspect of the terrible violence that uh, we experience the violence that uh, took place against or that takes place against women uh, against indigenous indigenous women in peru um against the poor but how they um how that violence it's present in other areas of society too uh, every area of society i would say um so that's why I felt I didn't want to just focus on Georgina's pain, which was one way to tell the story, just be with her and stay with her, which would have been very um, interesting too, uh, even more painful, I think. But I wanted to reflect on the entire country, the entire society, I would say. Um, so that's why I uh, Pedro Pedro's personal story is also in there. Uh, her, his struggle to hide his um, gay identity, um, the struggle of Leo to cope with the pain of uh, the kidnapping of the baby, and uh, in the background, you no, know, little by little, um, taking a radical path, no um so how all this um violence has provokes other way, ways forms of violence and how these coexist uh this this is something that i i wanted to to explore that's why it's uh, all these stories are present thank you it's it's very very powerful and obviously you show that before things get to be violent, there's an enormous amount of repression, there's abandonment of rights about it, treating people as second class citizens, especially indigenous people. Um, so all that is portrayed in such a vivid way and, and the, inevitable, the inevitability of living under that kind of terror shows that so many people have so few options uh, under that kind of threat. So. It's really vividly portrayed. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Yes, um, evidently we wanted to have um, a film that felt honest, that felt, as you say, vividly portrayed. So that's why we took the option to go to the places where people have experienced or do experience in their lives this sort of um, marginalization and it doesn't have to be as grave as terrible as what uh, Georgina went through but uh, still uh, everybody or most people know what it's like to experience racism to experience how is it like to have um, to struggle to get to work without education without the you know the 
titles, documents that uh, you require for a good job, and, and endless ways of um, blocks, uh, uh, things that block your path to improvement, to 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 become a, to realize a, to do what you want you know, to improve the, your conditions make your dreams come true whatever is uh, you want to call it no so uh, i was lucky in a way that in this town uh, via el salvador uh, it's sort of a model a uh, shanty town that grew uh, without paying attention to the art so I went to this theater called Sand and Mats. It's a nice uh, three-story theater they have in there. Um, they, and um, I introduced myself and to the director there, and I asked him to if I could do the casting of the film in that place. So I think that was key to to achieve the the, the um, basic. Uh, feeling of song without a name that you feel these people are real and because of them, they are now they are interpreting themselves or their parents their neighbors the stories are very close to them so this is one and there's where i found georgina and pamela mendoza they they all do such a wonderful job I think something else that really brings out the realism and the, the intimacy is your decision to, to show or, or shoot the film uh, in black and white. Sometimes black and white means that it treats the story as more of a memory, something that fall, is a little further back in history. This is relatively recent in the late 80s. Um, and so it doesn't treat the black and white as a, a nostalgia piece it really shows how immediate and how intimate all these stories are. And you do such a great job in portraying that. Um, what was your decision and what were some of the conflicting feelings you had about choosing black and white over color, for example? Yes, um, exactly. Well, there was some conflict because I think mainly because we, we always wanted to show the dance, the scissor dance, if you remember in the beginning, we always wanted to have that. And that's a very colorful dance. And then to lose that was sad. But um, also, you know, maybe to create a, a, a distance, you know. Uh, but apart from that, uh, we we thought it's a good idea to use black and white because um, it's it is our memory of a period of time, even though with the pandemic, we have discovered that uh, we haven't changed that much as a country, no? We have, we have fancier buildings and we have McDonald's, but uh, our health system is as bad as you see in the film. And it's uh, precisely the, uh, what uh, starts the film, no? the film begins the, or the conflict in the film, the biggest conflict begins because Georgina doesn't have a health care system available for her. So she hears in the radio that there is some people helping and she just goes because the option is to be at home by herself or maybe the, maybe the husband, maybe no. Um, so in that way, uh, we are the same, but at the same time, uh, the story comes from the 80s, no? comes from a very precise moment. So, and it's, it's a traumatic moment in time for us, the 80s, because uh, by bit you will feel uh, some symptom is uh, empathetic with this because we our president was not really on his right mind um we def he definitely was had some mental problems no i'm sure uh, 
many Americans will find uh, a lot in common no? with this. Not only somebody whose ideology is totally uh, against the majority of people and these things, but it still preserves certain level of decency. No? It was not the case with Alan Garcia. Uh, he was um, a person that uh, well knew to have a very uh, strong mental problems. So there is this aspect of darkness in, in the 80s where uh, we were more led by ego than anything else. So this, this danger, no? Um, to be completely out of uh, control uh, uh, and respect you know, for, for people's lives. Um, so in, in that regard, it, it, it worked because uh, the newspapers were giving the news in black and white in those days. Mm -hmm. So it helps us go there, to go to those times. Um, and the story comes from the news, so that's another reason. And also there's a very practical reason. The, the fact that when you don't have a big budget, obviously we, we didn't, um, it's a good idea to, to just have uh, to deal with grace because uh, you have more control. But the, but the, the, the story certainly feels epic in terms of the number of issues and the number of people and the number of places that uh, we see uh, from, you know, a, a high rise of a newspaper to, you know, to the, to the indigenous encampments that uh, they're living in. Um, when it, when it comes to, uh, when it comes to, you know, looking back, what were some of the things that you really wanted to highlight that maybe people weren't noticing so much at the time that have, really resonated for people since then? Aspects of the film that have resonated? Do you mean? Um, or, or perhaps aspects of life back then that maybe people weren't noticing and only realized later how impactful and damaging they were. Oh, yes, yes. Um, yes, I think over these decades after uh, 80s and 90s, we are now realizing still how damaging those days were because um, after that, uh, the, war, the internal war, uh, many people died. They were killed by the Shining Path and by the military, almost equal numbers, half and half. And um, many people disappeared and to this day, we are finding, uh, we're still to, uh, looking and uh, finding not many mass graves, but over past years, we have found mass graves and uh, people who have been kidnapped uh, as when they were children and then by Shining Path. No? Um, and then they are, they just got liberated, indigenous people. Uh, all kinds of stories, no? These are that I'm telling you was a number of years ago, but still it's crazy. Um, but also because um, to this day, it's it's unbelievable. The the word terrorist is used very lightly here in Peru. Uh, so every time a, a person wants to share their opinion or uh, criticize the government or criticize the economic neoliberal model that we've been under for 30 years, no? uh, you are called a terrorist, no? right, right away, very lightly, almost like a slang. You know? So, oh, a terrorist talking, terrorist all the time, all the time. So. Um, I think Shining Path in that regard was perhaps even more damaging uh, to our society than even because of the, the killings they, they perpetrated, no? because it's still um, they, anything that uh, supports people's rights, it's used like that by the right wing, no? by the 
people who support this very unfair economic system. Um, so, yes, the, we went from one extreme to the other. Uh, Alan Garcia in those days was supposed to have a, a plans for us to develop. Uh, but of course, I told you, he, he wasn't thinking of the country, but himself and his ideas. So when Fujimori came uh, in 1990, he fixed the country in the worst possible way with using the military and they were brutal, just or more brutal than, than the terrorists. So they were killing people on, on our aim no? with our support. No, so, um, and he imposed the, the economy that we have now, no? the, the, the system that we have now, right. where nobody really pays taxes. I mean, the, the rich don't pay taxes and they, they just, uh, it's an economy based on taking the gold, selling it and not seeing anything back. No? So, you can see the, the health system is nothing and the education system is nothing and everything is private. Even now the vaccines uh, are going to be, it looks like they're gonna be uh, private. So uh, I hope they stop this, they are trying to stop it, but looks like in Peru, we are gonna have this nightmare where only people who have the money to pay for vaccines against the coronavirus are going to to be able to use them. So you can imagine this is all uh, the perfect ground for um, another uh, upheaval, no? violent, of course, mm -hmm. violent situation. Mm -hmm. You talk about the, the musical number at the beginning of the film. You actually have, you intersperse musical numbers throughout the film. They're quite wonderful. Um, you call the film song without a name. And for me, it evokes the idea that all these children that get kidnapped, they never have names that their mothers ever get a chance to even apply. What, what was your intention around calling the film Song Without a Name? My intention was to speak about both things, just like with the black and white. Um, it speaks about love, it speaks about violence. It speaks about presence, it speaks about absence. Uh, and it was Michael White's idea, my friend from St. Louis who came up with it. We only had the nice part before the, we, the song, I mean, the, the film was called um, Lula Be For A Baby or something like that in Spanish, you know? Cancion de Cuna. You know? But uh, he, he added the, this touch, no? he said, you know, how about Canción sin nombre, song without a name. I thought, oh, it's much better, no? Because it completes the, the other side. And yeah, thanks for your remarks about the music. Yes, it, it was important for, for all of us to show the joy, uh, and to show the culture, to show everything that is uh, wonderful about Andean people, about us. Um, and that is hidden, that is um, not um, really seen much. Uh, because, I, and on top of that, of course, the drama, the conflict, the, the, the suffering arrives, no? But um, not as something intrinsic. Mm. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's certainly a celebration of the community, even when it's a community that has so very little, but there's a real poignancy because the film ends with Georgina singing sort of a lullaby to herself as almost a way to comfort herself, but also to grieve for something that she has very little control of. So the music really has such an emotional impact as well. Yeah, well, uh, towards the end, it was not the end we planned, but um, but when we saw it, we we talked with the DP. Maybe this this can work. It's better than we were thinking, than what we were planning. Um, yes, it's a way to say, well, she she's in this terrible place. But when you sing, if if she's capable of singing, of 
preserving this love, you know, maybe maybe she'll survive. Maybe she can do it. She can put a point on this. Yeah. Well, the the construction of the story can be so challenging when you have so many storylines interweaving. Did other things occur that didn't go that maybe you expected to have happen that you built it differently for a certain reason or certain scenes that you never used at all because they didn't add as much as you hoped they would? Yes. Um, the story of Pedro had to be cut a lot because um, a friend of ours uh, from Chile actually was saying, um, I feel like I am with Georgina and if you add so much of Pedro, it's interesting. Uh, don't get me wrong. I think it's good. It's interesting, but I the Georgina's story is so powerful, so sad that I feel that you take her away from me when you spend so much time. So people have told us this comment before, but when this person from Chile said it in this way, in such an emotional way, I understood. I don't want this to happen to the audience that she's uh, uh, that they are emotionally com committed uh, with this character and I insist in adding something uh, no so that's when I I took the scissors and said <laughs> okay come on, let's let's cut uh, a bit of the story of Pedro mm. yeah. I, th I think we get a lot of his story from a little bit. So it, it doesn't feel like there's any loss in that. Um, what was the reception of the film when you showed it in the in Peru and, and how how widespread was it actually seen at all? Well, we are premiering on Friday on Netflix. Yes. Oh, great. Netflix Latin America, because in, in the US it's other it has other distributor film movement. But uh, yes, Friday. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It, it, there is a lot of interest because obviously the people were expecting the film in April in movie theaters, and we had to wait such a long time. So uh, on the other hand, it's it's great to see this. Uh, the, everyone telling us finally we've waited with you and we can watch it. So I, I think it's it's great. Uh, the, the press, everyone is responding very well. Uh, well, congratulations and, and have a great opening. Um, what are you working on next? I'm working uh, when I can, when I'm not promoting the film. Um, but um, yes, I'm working on the story of a teenager from Cusco, San Blas. And her story is going to be about discovering um, her power as an artist and um, how she's going to handle her very serious illness. She discovers she has epilepsy. So it's epilepsy and religious art, sort of. Um, that's the world where we're going to be dealing with the Andean and the Spanish and how to survive all that. <laughs> Oops. It sounds wonderful. We we hope to get a chance to see it at some point, but more than anything, we really appreciate you joining us here today. Thank you so much for sharing the film with us and, and good luck with all of your future projects. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful film and um, we're really pleased to be able to show it. Thank you so much. Super glad. Got to talk to you. Take care. Thank you. <laughs>